the nation's favourite celebrities. <laughs> Ooh, I like that. Paired up with an expert. Oh, we've had some fun, haven't we? And a classic car. It feels as if it could go quite fast. Their mission? To scar Britain for antiques. Yes. Fantastic. <laughs> I do that in slow mo. The aim? To make the biggest profit at auction. Come on, boys. But it's no easy ride. Ta-da! Who will find a hidden gem? <laughs> Don't sell me! Who will take the biggest risks? Go away, darling. Will anybody follow expert advice? <laughs> I'm trying to spend money here. There will be worthy winners. <laughs> yes! And valiant losers. <laughs> Put your pedal to the metal. This is the Celebrity Antiques Road Trip. Yeah. On this road trip, we're treading the boards with two titanic British legends of stage and screen. Charles Dance and Geraldine James. So when did we first meet, Gerald? I think it was 1981 or two. Blimey. When we started Jewel and the Crown. These two indeed met as glamorous young thespians starring in the classic 1980s TV drama of the British Raj in India, The Jewel in the Crown. I'd been in You were kind of team leader, before. weren't you? I, I remember was, you said, right, what we've got to do with now, we're going to go down to Jampat and then we're going to go in the gardens of the Imperial Hotel and have tea. But we were very lucky to be there for six months because it gave, oh, it gave hell us time yeah. and we saw so much of it. It was a joy. 14 hours of high quality film. Indeed it was. Since then, Geraldine has hardly been off our screens as a leading lady in everything from star-studded drama to classy period pieces. And what was that play we did? Over there, over here, over there. Turning over. Turning. Charles has also played down the years with impressive range and bearing. Delighting audiences everywhere. Most recently as the tyrannical Tywin Lannister in global mega hit Game of Thrones. Today, these two are driving a marvelous 1965 Mercedes 220. It was manufactured before seat belts were mandatory and hence they aren't buckled up. Got it? It reminds me of my wild youth. Oh, does it? A seat belt, yes. Oh, yes. Did you have a wild youth then, Gerald? Some would say. You weren't thrown out of school, were you? Several times. Three times. Were you really? My father refused to have me home, so they had to keep me. No. Yes. Anyway. <laughs> I say. Joining these two troopers on this trip are a pair of antiques auctioneers. In full voice, Will Axon and Natasha Raskin. It's nice to meet a face, isn't it? Do you think you'll sort of refine your accent a wee bit? Because I'm already doing it. Uh, yeah, are oh, you? You already begun the rod. Do a warm up. <laughs> la, 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 la. Don't give the day job up, Natasha. These two are piloting a 1970 Triumph TR6. Well, you're handling this Triumph beautifully. <laughs> well, thank you for saying. <laughs> beautifully. With £400 to spend, we'll kick off today's shopping in Tetbury, Gloucestershire, and aim for an auction in Rayleigh in Essex. And now here we are in South Gloucestershire, off to spend some money. Yes, indeed. And with that in mind, it's time for celebrities to meet ex... Oh, Lordy. Will! <laughs> what is happening? Oh, my days. What have you done? I was saying you were driving it so nicely. Oh, I don't want to touch it. Hang on, I'm going to open it. Oh, dear. Right, it's the engine. He's brilliant, isn't he? OK, time for some shoe leather, I think. We've got to start walking. You lead the way, I don't have a clue how to get there. What time do you call this? Oh, Hello. Tash broke the car. <laughs> it wasn't me, believe me, it wasn't me. Really? <laughs> so nice to meet you. Hi, how are you? Hi, how do you do? Nice, nice, to, meet nice meet to meet you, you as well. <laughs> now they've finally united, they've already decided that Geraldine will pair up with Will and Charles with Natasha, and the latter is nabbing the only remaining car. I'm going to have to try and blag some alternative mode of transport. I saw a bus. A bus <laughs> will do. <laughs> will, I feel so sorry for you. This car is lovely. I'm sorry, Geraldine, to turn okay. you out. Yeah. That's all right. See you later. Bye. 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 Come on then. Right, well, off we we'll go. walk in their tracks. So, Charles and Natasha set sail. I've known Geraldine for quite some time now. <laughs> in fact, honestly, she's one of my oldest friends. She's the most delightful woman. While Geraldine and Will are rather stuck in port. Seriously? A jag? Yes, but we can't just get in a car. 
Luckily, at the local crazy golf course, generous Jag owner Peter will give them a lift. Thanks, Peter. They're finally on the road. Meanwhile, Charles and Natasha have arrived in the town of Tetbury and are ready to shop. They're heading into Top Banana Antiques Mall. Hoping it lives up to its name. Are you Country ready? Antique for, well, as ready as I'll ever be. Where dealer Julian will greet them. Hello, Julian. Uh -huh. Nice to meet you. And you. Nice to meet you too. Shall we start on the shelves where we can actually pick some stuff up and have a good fondle? Very good idea, Tom. I'm going to get this open so you can fondle in here too. Oh, okay. fantastic. Awful. We knew we'd come to the right place. <laughs> right, That's OK. An awful lot of fondling. Yeah. Well. <laughs> hey, I say. First, they're going to scour the place. <laughs> ah, Natasha's found something. Having Please. played so many wonderful authoritative parts, yeah. look what's behind you. Look at that hat box. It's wonderful. It looks so. wooden. Oh, it's tin. Hold my glasses. I will. Well, it's pretty unusual, isn't it? Let's face it. Let's see. Is there a hat inside? It would be so nice if there were. No. no. There's no hat inside. It's a tin for a naval officer's bicorn hat, probably dating from the 19th century. Charles is quite keen on naval history, so that's piqued his fancy. But it's a quirky thing, isn't it? It is, isn't it? You're absolutely right. We'll, we'll come back to, it. to that. It's cool, isn't it? Well spotted. Cool. They're off to a good start. But what's that Charles has spied now? I mean, silver blocks. What? These are just blocks of silver, then. That's... They're ingots, aren't they? Just blocks that have been hallmarked, and they are quite wearable. But as objects, I mean, I've never seen things, these things before, but then, and again, I'm just an actor. <laughs> an actor with an eye for antiques, Charles. It's an engraved silver ingot, hallmarked for 1977. On the ticket, £24. <laughs> polished up. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, polished up. They're rather pretty things, aren't they, don't you think? They are rather smart. I'm going to talk to Julian about them. You do your stuff. I can't wait I to see you in action. Now. Yeah, do it. Why not? Oh, Julian! What's the best price you can give on that? I reckon we'll do it for £18. For £18? £18. <clears throat> I was hoping you might do it for something like 12 12 So £15, we have a deal. Oh, he's playing hard. Oh, <laughs> okay. cool. Thanks, right. Julian. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much. Julian. Thank you. That's their first buy sealed. And this has all the hallmarks of a promising day shopping. <laughs> Meanwhile, Geraldine and Will are being ferried in generous bystander Peter's Jag. We have landed on our feet. Peter, you're very kind to give us a lift. And Will's coming out as a fan of one of Geraldine's recently celebrated roles in dark conspiracy drama, Utopia. I mean, Utopia, it was an amazing piece of television. I'd be interested to see how, how, how you sort of saw it. It was extraordinary. For me, it all starts from the script. And I read that and was completely hooked by the writing. It was so unusual and so mysterious and so sort of shocking. All that is great, it's really good fun. And there's more fun back in Tetbury, where Charles and Natasha are still combing through their first shop's ample stock. Well, all manner of things in here. But what's this Charles has alighted upon? You see, it's 2016. It's 100 years since the Battle of the Song, 1916. And we are rightly being reminded of that bloody, horrible battle. It's a scrapbook containing photographs of combatants in the First World War. Charles is intrigued by it. However, let us see what Natasha thinks about it. She who must be obeyed. I'll say. Natasha. Charles. What have you got? Well, have a look at that. OK, the Great War press cuttings. Yeah. Well, no, there are no cuttings in it, but there are these photographs. Oh, look at these. Hold on, are they actual...? They are, it looks like Well, they're, they're photographs, yeah. Um, whether they're photographs of photographs, if you know Could well I mean. be, yeah. I do, Charles. It looks as though the photographs might be commercially produced reprints. The book probably dates from the interwar period. It's got 48 pounds on it. Indeed. Well, I think, you know, we'd have to... 
We'd have to do better than that. With one book set aside, Charles is revealing himself to be a bit of a bibliophile. I've no idea what this is, but it looks as if it might be rather lovely. Oh, look at that. It's an illustrated copy of the epic poem Evangeline by American poet Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. This limited edition was published in the late 19th century. Aesthetically, I think that's really rather beautiful. Um, <clears throat> when I was at art school, I did typography and photography and um, as a piece of book design, it's really rather lovely. I bet this is probably an eye-watering amount. Oh, I don't know. 40 quid. Again, I'm going to, um, I'm going to talk to Natasha, I'm afraid. She's my guiding light. What catches well, my eye yeah. is that each book plate, one of the really nice ones, if we get to this, mm. by Frank Dixie. Are you yeah. familiar with that name? No, I'm not, but so I, I hope you are. Proper Victorian artist. Yeah. Really um, painting, <clears throat> paintings like um, La Belle Dame, Sans Merci. Easy for you to say. Really okay. evocative, stirring subject matter in a kind of pre-Raphaelite style. She knows her stuff, doesn't she? <laughs> that she does. But they've now assembled a large pile of items they like. The World War I scrapbook, the edition of Evangeline, and the bicorn hat tin they saw earlier. So, with their heads set on a hard haggle, off they go to Julian. Ticket price on all that lot is £173. Well, to cut and not too fine a point on it, mm -hmm. I'd like to leave this shop... <laughs> with, with some pennies with left. That, 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 and um, I'd like some change from a hundred. Oh my God! Now that is that is hard work. But listen, I've been doing maths rapidly and yeah. reworking and shaving and chipping and redoing and re-adding. I reckon one hundred and forty quid. How about one? Uh, how about one fifteen? And we leave the shop. One twenty. We do a deal now. Thank you very much. Thank you. Phew. With full use of Charles's trademarked steely gaze, a deal is struck. But while they're paying up... Let's call it 130. Charles, Let's not Charles. bugger about. 130 deal. Oh, Charles. I could keep lunch in there, yeah. couldn't I? Certainly could. Meanwhile, in that lovely jag, Geraldine and Will have travelled about 20 miles and Geraldine's filling Will in on a little of her family background. My parents were both in the medical profession. They met in a hospital. Um, my mum worked at Guy's during the war. As luck would have it, this morning they're heading for a place that can shed a bit of light on the fascinating early history of British public medicine, the Mechanics Institute of Swindon's Railway Village. They are indeed driving to the town of Swindon, where they're meeting Daniel Rose, chair of the Mechanics Institute Trust. The railway village here was built in the 1840s to house the workforce employed in the huge Swindon workshops of the Great Western Railway. The railway was one of the grand marvels of the Victorian industrial age, designed and built by the most famous of our engineers, Isambard Kingdom Brunel. Was this all Brunel's idea? It was Brunel's design uh, that laid out the railway village that we see today uh, and all of these buildings around us. Yeah. It was the GWR that brought the workforce to Swindon. The, the railway brought the people. That's right, and with all those people that arrived to work in the railway works, they needed somewhere to live, uh, and they needed facilities uh, and recreational opportunities. The jobs created by GWR's workshops attracted people to this previously quiet area, but the cottages of the railway village were soon under great strain. Hundreds and then thousands of workers descended on this area, uh, but there just wasn't enough supply of housing. There was meant to be 300 cottages that Brunel was meant to build in this area. People recorded in their diaries at the time um, and started to vote with their feet the fact that it was a pretty dull place um, uh, and wasn't a very healthy place either. There was a real risk that Swindon would fail, and it was thanks to the efforts of the workers themselves that saved the place and turned Swindon into a success. The Mechanics Institution was formed in 1844 for the benefit and enlightenment of those employed by the GWR. 
In the coming years, it would provide all the necessary facilities for New Swindon to become a thriving community. Medical care, entertainment and education were all eventually provided for the workforce. Who funded all these community endeavours? The workers themselves came together. Uh, the Great Western Railway uh, gave them the land, uh, but then they had to raise funds, so they sold shares. But essentially the workers themselves built and paid for and governed the, the organisation and the building. Did they have a theatre? They did. The theatre was upstairs in the Mechanics Institution. You can see it here today. It's built in 1854. It's beautiful building. Um, and that was really the, the centre of Swindon social life. Today the building is boarded up, but there are proposals to redevelop it. Over the years, even greater facilities were provided to the Swindon Works employees. Here, a medical fund society brought a level of health care that had never before been enjoyed by ordinary working people. So all these little rooms, what, what are they? They're different treatment rooms? Yeah, so there was a range of different therapies available in this building, um, including the swimming baths uh, and the Turkish baths, but also a range of medical care. There was doctors, there was a dentistry, um, and there was also a range of other therapies. All for free? Yes, all for free, because people contributed to the Medical Fund Society through their wages. These innovations at Swindon continued into the 20th century. And when the idea of a national health service was raised, its architects knew just where to look. Of course, it was then uh, in the 1940s when Nye Bevan oh. visited Swindon uh, during the formation and the ideas of the NHS uh, that came here and studied the Medical Fund Society um, and took inspiration uh, from what happened here as part of the blueprint that he put together for a national health service. So the vision of the Mechanics Institution helped to provide universal care for the whole of the country and this building is still caring for the people of Swindon today. The building is still fully operational which is an amazing thing. There are therapists in here, so there are chiropractors and osteopaths and physiotherapists, that kind of thing, uh, along with just people going for a swim. Now, Charles and Natasha are motoring to the town of Sirencester in Gloucestershire. They're heading into Sirencester Antique Centre a very cosmopolitan choice. Here we are, Siren Sister. Change here for Moscow, Stockholm and Paris. Siren Sister, <laughs> yeah. OK, you ready to buy some more stuff? Indeed. OK, so am I. And they're straight off and browsing. What do you have? Is that a wee frame? Oh! Mm -hmm. It's a cute one for all the family. It is, isn't it? Mm. Oh, and look, it's actually, it's quite theatrical because it it's got curtains. Let's see it up. Very nice. Yeah. And then reveal to us. Oh. That's rather nice, isn't it? It is cute. It probably dates from the early or mid 20th century and has a ticket price of 42 pounds. Mm, we really want it for it's about 15, steep, 20. We do, darling, we Maybe do. Maybe even less. But what has Natasha spotted now? Maybe we could beef up our lots a wee bit, that nice press cuttings folder. Maybe we could add right. a little bit of trench art to it, perhaps? Yeah, yeah. Trench art is work produced by soldiers in the First World War, usually items crafted from materials readily available on the battlefield, like these empty shell casings. Okay, so they're yeah. quite naive and quite sweet and genuine. And also... They're cheap. They are cheap. Yeah. <laughs> they are at £18 the pair. So they certainly got their sights on those, but there's another battle coming as Will and Geraldine are here too. Watch out. Come on, after you. Toys. Get in. And look who's waiting in the wings. Uh-oh. Oh, that's a good question. Look at him. Look, he's found something, he's found something. <laughs> say hello, come on, let's oh. go and wind him up. Hello. What are you, hello. Hiding? What are you hiding? Nothing. <laughs> Absolutely nothing. Are you staying upstairs? You're going downstairs? We're, we yeah, haven't we've been upstairs. downstairs. Have you, you been downstairs? We'll go downstairs then, in that case. Yes. <laughs> that's, a, that's, that's, that's a terrible like, limp you've got, I Chris. I know, sir. it's such a shame. He's had he did have something face. behind his back. Yeah. You two'd better stop spying on the opposition and get browsing. Glasses. You like glass? Set. I love glass. Hmm. Will? Yes. See, that's, that's a very interesting pattern of that. Is that talky I've never wear? seen it. Well, it must be. Yeah, talky. It's not unusual. I've never seen that pattern before. Um, you do know your stuff, Geraldine. Impressive. It's quite pretty, isn't it? It is quite pretty. It's £8. 
It's a potential. OK. Should we leave it here? Yeah, hide it behind a plate. You're learning quick. <laughs> leave it with me. We shall. Devon Pottery. Why do I keep honing in on this stuff? It's well, just because I know it. I think we've got to buy a piece of 33. Devon Pottery. 33 quid. Another piece of pottery from the West Country, this one made in the Devon town of Dartmouth. This jug could be paired with the beaker to make a job lot from the sunny southwest. They're building up quite a haul, these two. But elsewhere, Charles and Natasha are still on the hunt. And what's that? I don't know, is that some sort of... Is that not for tickets on a bus? <laughs> it is. Is that a conductor's for... ticket machine? Give him your money, <laughs> the, the ticket comes out, and I guess he goes... Like that, and out comes your ticket. The ticket machine probably dates from the 1960s, and there's £69 on the ticket. Oh, there's the ticket thing. Look. Oh, look, it even comes with a spool of paper. That goes in there. Oh, I see. Oh, that's cool. See? Now, that's got my juices running, OK? That's what I wanted to hear. There's a thought. These two also have the little picture frame and the pair of trench art vases in mind. Shopkeeper Will intends phoning the three dealers. First on the blower, Nicky, who owns the £42 picture frame. And I'd love to know what your very, 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 very best price would be. 30 quid. All right, that's a deal. All right. Thank you very much, Nicky. Thank you. Bye. OK. She must like you. She doesn't normally go that low. Oh, how good is that? Next up, Neil, who owns the pair of trench art vases with a ticket price of £18. What's the very best you can do for that? How about half price, nine quid? Sorry? It's at Raj, did you say? No, you're speaking to Charles. Charles Dance, my name is. Hello. You're a gentleman. Thank you very, very much indeed, Neil. Thank you. Bye-bye. Nine pounds? Nine pounds. How oh. good is that? Well done, Raj. <laughs> yes. Yes. Is that Raj? <laughs> yes. A case of mistaken identity notwithstanding, that's another winner. Now, what about the ticket machine, which had £69 pounds on its own ticket? Can I make you an offer? <sighs> Somewhere between 35 and 40. Would you really? You're a gentleman. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. 40. 40 pounds. Well done. Charles's mellifluous tones make that a phone haggling hat trick. Okay. We have got quite a swag bag, Charles. A <laughs> swag bag. <laughs> Hear him roar. They've got that lot Thank you. for a total Thanks, of £79. Pounds. But Geraldine and Will are still on the hunt. Listen to Charles dance down there, bartering away. I can hear him, you know. I demand I have this for nothing. I think he's enjoying himself. Well, I'm enjoying myself, but I'm just feeling a little bit that I should have... We need to get ...committed my cash. And on that note... But do you like silver? Yeah. Yes, I do like silver. I remember in India, all the silver jewellery. If we can find a bit of Indian silver, perhaps we could go with that. And dealer Brian might have just the thing to remind Geraldine of her Indian adventures. Is that Indian? Yes. Very Indian. Oh, yes. It's a little silver embossed box with a ticket price of £78. I've dropped the price. Just like Brian's going to. <laughs> Put that to one Absolutely. side for us. Yeah. Okay. And we can always battle it out. Yeah. That's a possibility. But elsewhere, there's one more exotic item. That's, That's nice. quite nice, that architectural carving. What is it? Hardwood. Oh, and your head. Oh, lordy. It's an ornate carved lintel, apparently hailing from a Moroccan Riyadh, ticketed at £110. Please stop picking it up, you're going to hurt yourself. Well, I'm just having a look yeah. at it. Yes, stop trying to lift that and let's see if dealer Brian can lower some prices. Hi. Hi. Brian. First up, the West Country Pottery, ticketed at £41 combined. Your very best price. The very best. How about 30 <laughs> 30 pounds for the two? It's quite good, isn't it? Which is quite good. It's it not is. quite as good as 25 would be. <laughs> That's not good, that's naughty. That's, not good for you, <laughs> that's naughty. But hang on, we, we had the um, 
We had the little silver box as well. Oh, we yes. I, yeah. The counter, I didn't that. we? Yeah, I kept that for you. Yeah. In the catacombs, I found this one, a lovely Chinese one. Oh, look out, and Brian. It's oh, quite fine work on that. That's, oh. yeah. that's, that's better finish, isn't it? Now, that, that I like. Yeah, more refined, better quality than perhaps the Indian piece. So I like the feel of that better than that. And I like that. Price on that? Do there isn't a price on, on it, which is that slightly one. worrying. No, that one's 85, but I can do it for 60 for you. I think Brian has done us a good, yes, a good, good. good turn there. So, my part of the bargaining, I'm going to say yes at sixty pounds. Brilliant. Brilliant. And what of the Moroccan carved lintel, priced at one hundred and ten pounds and owned by a dealer off-site? If he said it's fifty quid, I'd say would have it. But that's a big, that's that a is, big ask. That's a big ask, that's isn't that's it? Hell. That is a big 50 ask. Fifty pounds is a big ask, isn't it? Oh wow, he's in a very good mood. Fifty-five. Should we go for it? Yeah. Let's go Absolutely. for it. We've got to, really. After we've... Will you thank him very, yeah, very much? Geraldine says thank From you very Will much. Brilliant. Will. And Will. So, those three lots combined are now offered for £145 in total. But Will's got other ideas. So, can we say yes, £130? Absolutely. For... Yeah. Good heavens, yeah. thank you. This man has been a godsend. Thank you very yeah. much you have been. What a deal. And they've got everything they need in this shop, too. Yes. Well, we'll revert to type now. You pay the man and I'll go and get the heavy thing. <laughs> oh. And with that, the curtain falls on a fabulous first day on this road trip. Nighty night, darlings. But these players are such stuff as dreams are made of. The morning greets them on the road and ready for more. Did you have a good time yesterday? I felt, I felt like a kid in a toy shop. I absolutely <laughs> loved it. You? I think it was OK. I mean, thank God for Natasha. Yeah. Have you bought anything that might be a tiny bit risky? <laughs> um, I think it's all a tiny bit risky. <laughs> you catch on quick, Charles. And their devoted experts are moving too, and in a replacement car. Is that a 1970s Citroen DS20 I see? I think it is. Well, well, bien fait. Well done. Where did you come across this French beauty? Le Citron. Très joli. So far, Charles and Natasha have amassed a whopping seven items. The Great War scrapbook, the bicorn hat tin, the volume of Evangeline, the silver ingot, the pair of trench art vases, the bus conductor's ticket machine and the little picture frame. Blimey, they still have £191 left to spend while Geraldine and Will have gathered three lots, the Moroccan lintel, the Chinese silver box, and the two pieces of West Country pottery. They still have 270 pounds in their pockets. Oh, they look cool, don't look they? Look at that. Like that. There they are. Good morning. OK, let's get this show on the road. Don't ask. Where exactly did you get that car, Will? Now, Charles is reminiscing on his time making the Arnold Schwarzenegger movie, The Last Action Hero. I was sat in the makeup room with F. Murray Abraham, who was also in the film, and we were having possibly a rather pompous conversation about European art films, do you know? OK. And Arnold came in on the back of it, you know. He said, you know, you need the money you make in my films to make your art films. <laughs> <laughs> he said, you're absolutely right, Arnold. And talk has turned to Hollywood in the other car, too. I did a film, a small bit in a film with Morgan Freeman. Wow. And I was beside myself. Star -star. Really? I was playing his lover, <gasps> and we had to have a love scene in a pile of hay. He's such a wonderful man. No we. This morning, these two are driving to Bath. Tender. They've still got a whopping £270 to spend. And they're strolling off to Bath Antiques. Hello. Welcome. How do you do? I'm Geraldine. Niceties concluded. Time for a plan. Should we go around together or do you want to split up? No, I'm going to... Let's go around together. You shout if you see anything that will. catches your eye. 150. 150 pounds. No. We don't know what we're looking for, do we? We just want something that we like. Something to jump out at us. Will seems to have lost Geraldine, but what's he found? This has just caught my eye, really, just because it's big and impressive, but I'm just trying to ascertain if it's got 
any age to it. Well, there's plenty of dust. Just having a look for any wear on the foot. It looks to have a little bit of wear, you know. I mean, it's a big, impressive lot. It's got a big, impressive ticket price too, £95. Not signed anywhere, though. That's a shame. Let's call in Geraldine. Well, I was looking at that earlier on. Were you? Mm. I mean, it's obviously got a little bit of age to it. Has it? Because that's what I... I think so, because, look, you can see... Do you see how you see these natural ripples? And then you've got these little air bubbles caught in it. Time to talk money with Annette. Stand by, girl. Ah. Well, I've gone from the cellar right back upstairs. Yeah. And... Right back down again. I've come back with this... What I think is a rather nice glass centre bowl. Yeah. It was tucked away upstairs. Yeah. Covered in dust. Yeah. So it's obviously been there forever. It's been there for a while. Price-wise, we would really need to be buying it for as close to 20, 30 quid as we could. OK, I'll phone Jill. The vendor Jill isn't here today. Fortunately, Annette has her on speed dial, so over to you, Geraldine. Hello. We've had a very good look round here and we're rather struck by your green glass bowl. What are we say, asking? We're wondering if... 25. You're prepared to accept 25. Yeah. Twenty-eight and a half. Twenty-eight and a half. Twenty-eight quid. Twenty-eight and we're sorted. around with 50p's. <laughs> we're sorted on 28. Is that all right? Thank you, Jill. An incredible discount on the dusty green bowl. Well done, Geraldine. I'll do the honours and carry the yeah. piece. So you can Thank you. Play Thank me. you. Very nice to meet you. Thanks Lovely a lot. To meet Thank you. you. Thanks very much for Thank your you. help. And you. Bye bye. Bye. Meanwhile, Charles and Natasha are aiming for their first shop of the day. I've got you at my right hand, and I don't think we can fail. That's the spirit. This morning, they're driving to Warminster. But what are they going to find here? Right. The object is to spend money. Indeed it is. They're meeting dealer, Laura. Hello. Can I have a jelly, baby? Absolutely, go for it. And with that little sweetener, <laughs> they're on the hunt. Intriguing, but who wants to buy it? No. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I can't forgive me. Ha! But there's one thing that has made an impression. I haven't looked at the label, so I have no idea what this is. Very interesting, isn't it? It's a bench that's been fashioned from a piece of farming equipment with a wooden top added. The cast iron pace is Victorian. 1840, circa 1840. I think it says 1890s. Charles, you forgot your glasses. Honestly, if I believed you, everything would be 50 years older than it was. <laughs> I know, Charles. The cheek. I like it. I love it. It is super you do. cool. I think it is. Do you exactly... like it at three hundred and forty-nine quid? No, I don't. But I like it. I like its style. I'm not sure about the iron thing. The iron, what, Charles? I have faith in the material. Is what I have faith in, and the fact that the Victorians just cast everything in iron. But more importantly, do you have faith that it will sell? Yes. I mean, it's a cool you do. thing. do. Oh, for sure, it would sell. That hefty ticket says it's owned by a dealer called Debs. What manner of woman is Debs, Laura? My mother. Oh! oh that's Debs, that Debs, that Debs. And while Laura has a conflab with her mum, they search on. It was open. <laughs> when is a door not a door? <sighs> I don't know. When it's a jar. When... <laughs> The old ones are the best, Charles. And this pair of hallmarked silver vases have some age too. They're marked for 1904. Okay, let's have a look. These have are typically at Edwardian. Have a look at that one. At 160 quid. Okay. But, oh, 160. Yeah. Okay, well. Well, reduced. Reduced, reduced from to 160. 200. These are not rare. These are stylish. So. Sorry, what did you yeah, say? So, hello. <laughs> <laughs> Speak up, Natasha. <laughs> so. I'd be looking for about half price, and I'd be looking for you to work your magic. OK. Laura will try to contact the dealer who owns those, but they've two pricey buys in mind and only £191 left. 
It turns out Where's Laura's mum, Debs, Laura? is in fact nearby. <laughs> Very close by, but hiding, yes. Could she come out of hiding? Can I have a word with mum? I'm sure you can. I shall go yeah. and see if I can pull her out. Fabulous. Poor mum. She's heard that Charles Dance is coming and she's seen you play these horrible villains and you've scared her into hiding. No, I haven't. Not at all. <laughs> well, she's she's out there making herself a cup of tea. Treat it as a role. Lull her into a false sense of security. <laughs> No, I have to lull her into a sense of security, not a false sense of security. Oh, right, OK. I'll do my damnedest, anyway. <laughs> oh, there she is. There we go. Ah, damn. He doesn't bite, Mum. <laughs> Hello, Debs. How are you? Oh, very nice to see you. God, he's smooth. Time for a chat about that bench. Debs has priced it at £349. <laughs> I'm going to be really cheeky now. Give on, then. <laughs> Try me. Um, can I have that for 85 quid? You never straighten your hair, I hope, do you? No. Well, do you know, so many people, women do, I know that they spend hours with straighteners getting these fantastic waves out of their hair. <laughs> and you don't do it. Don't ever straighten your hair. I won't. It's brilliant. <laughs> anyway, but, but... I think that might have worked. He is good, isn't he? So, can we, can we shake on 85 quid? Go on, then. How's it to you? I owe you, all right? I had a line in Game of Thrones. The lamp... <laughs> The Lannisters always pay their debts. <laughs> and now, good luck with it. You're I indebted to Debs. Do well. Thank you, Debs. Very kind. But now Laura's got the dealer who owns the silver vases on the blower. Hello, Heather. It's Charles Dance. How are you? Oh, hello. I'm very well, thank you. Good. OK, what we're trying to do is leave this shop with our shopping finished. So I want to give you what we have remaining in our... Hot little pocket, you see. Am I pushing my luck to offer you a, a hundred? You're an absolute angel, Heather. <laughs> thank you very, very much indeed. And thank you for being patient with us. <laughs> Enjoy the rest of your day. And you. Enjoy your shopping. All right, my darling, thank you. Another devastatingly charming haggle from Charles means they spent all but six pounds of their budget. Isn't that fantastic? May I? <coughs> Thank, Thank you. you. And they're wandering onwards. I'm in complete awe of you, Charles Dance. That was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Back in beautiful Bath, Geraldine and Will have just finished lunch. All right, for some, eh? That was delicious. Hang on a minute, what's going on here? All right, lads. What's going on here? You don't often see one of these in the middle of the street. So what was the plan with this? Well, I was going to put it in the office. We've got an antique office up the antique office. Right? Yeah. It's uh, an old office. It's, <laughs> it's packed full of antiques. And uh, this works quite well in there, but unfortunately it won't fit. This sounds like an opportunity. A 19th century French escritoire. Seems to be going begging, rather. We're on an antiques road trip. And we're looking for things to buy. But Jeremy here has got this grand beast from a dealer nearby. How much was it? 700 quid. But since then, which is quite good, but since then I've damaged the front ah. by, by the front falling open. And also I think there's a little bit of live woodwork. What do you reckon? We could help this man out, can we? Well, we haven't quite got uh, anything like 700. We haven't we? got 700 quid. Would you take 230 for it? Yeah, go on then. So he's been packing it back in the van. Really? 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 French Empire stuff anyway, so... Go on then. Yeah, go on then. 200 hey. Empire stuff. What have we done? Nice. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Okay. I wasn't expecting that. That's all right. Tell you what, it's a deal. A most unexpected alfresco buy, or al desco buy. <laughs> Pay the man. Oh, look. I've actually left myself a tenner. We need that for... But I need that for this afternoon. Check your pockets. Well, you actually have £12 left. That's absolutely amazing. Thanks for that. All the best. Amazing. That's um, hilarious. I'm not sure I just did that, did we? You jolly well did. Now, whilst motoring to their next stop, Charles is filling Natasha in on his childhood. I was brought up in Plymouth. I was brought up by the sea. It's very much, it's kind of part of my blood. I need to be by the sea at times. I actually thought about joining the Navy. Really? So they're driving to the environs of the village of Ilchester and flying towards the Royal Navy's Fleet Air Arm Museum. I think they saved a space for us and everything. Fabulous. Where they're meeting curator Dave Morris. Hello, this is Natasha. This enormous hangar houses an impressive collection of over 90 aircraft which tell the story of the Royal Navy's adventures in the skies. 
Although you might naturally think of our naval forces as being sea-bound, the Navy has in fact been developing aircraft and flying missions for more than a century. And Charles, for one, can't wait to find out more. Tell me, how and why did the Navy take to the air? Uh, one of the great necessities at sea is to be able to see over the horizon. So the Navy's been experimenting with tethered kites and tethered man lifting balloons for many, many years in the bid to try and just get that advantage of looking over the horizon. How many years, though? From the early 1900s. Really? As, as soon as kites and balloons are being developed enough to lift a man and, and think usefully about that, the Navy starts to become interested in flying. These early experiments with kites and balloons showed the Navy what advantages aerial capability could offer to the fleet. And in 1903, one great innovation blew those possibilities sky high. The aeroplane comes along in 1903 as the first time man has used powered controlled flight and the Navy's taking an immediate interest. It can move away from the ship several miles and rove around, pick up information, spot weather, spot landfall, use it tactically, even begin to think about using it for search and rescue. The plane behind them is a very early example of a naval aircraft. Did a plane like that sit on the top deck of a battleship? Pretty much, yes. I mean, really? But a plane like that needs quite a lot of meters to take off, doesn't it? Exactly, and this is what they were learning fast as they were beginning to look at, at taking airplanes to sea and using them for the first time. <coughs> the platforms, the structures, the takeoff platforms were incredibly small, very yeah. precarious, very dangerous. Yeah. And they were relying as much on the ship steaming into wind that would just about get an aircraft airborne in a very short distance. I don't like the just about, no, do you? No. If I was a pilot on that plane and somebody said, we well, could just about take off. Wow. They were learning fast that, that flying from ships was possible, but very, very dangerous. Yeah. From the Navy's first hazardous forays into launching planes at sea, they quickly began to develop more advanced technologies. The experimental age is, is over. Um, aircraft are now needed and being used, of course, for war. This is, this is the beginning of World War I. Right. This is typical of one of the, the Sopwith aircraft that would have been used by the Royal Naval Air Service during World War I. And straight away, lots of things are changing. It, 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 it's got more purpose, it's got a better engine. Um, the whole design has become more compact. Yeah, and these floats mean that it can land and take off on water. Absolutely. So exactly how large a role did planes like this play during World War I? Enormous, it was huge. Uh, aircraft changed the shape of warfare as, as we know it from World War I. You're no longer dealing with just foot troops and cavalry. You can now get airborne, fly around over the battle zone, look down, attack from above. I mean, it, it, it put a whole new dimension literally in, into warfare. Over the coming decades, the Navy's air fleet would continue to make brave leaps forward. One of the great sea changes came in the period following World War II, when they began to swap wings for rotor blades, developing Navy helicopters like this one. Four years after the end of World War II, we've got this as the new technology, the new helicopter age. Amazing. <laughs> Am I allowed to get in there? Please do, try and for No stress. Get in there, soldier. Oh, my days. Oh, brilliant. There's not a lot of room in here. Oh, you look great. Do you enjoy it? Really? Yeah, wonderful. Okay. the part. Do you want the key? <laughs> Please. Steady on, Charles. <laughs> Meanwhile, Geraldine and Will have motored the Citroen 40 minutes southwest to the village of Ston Easton. Oh, two magpies. Two? Yep. That's a good sign. Very good sign. Let's hope all is joyful as they aim for their next shop. The Somerset Shop and Reclamation looks interesting. Oh, my days. Slightly wish we had a bit more money. Quite. You've only got £12 left in your kitty. How do you do? I'm Will. Hello, Will. Hey, I'm John. Hello, John. Nice to meet you. You're a small lad, aren't you? <laughs> Around six foot four, if you're wondering. Hi, Geraldine. Hello, Geraldine. Very John. nice to meet you. What Very an amazing place. What an amazing place you've got here. Well, with everything from clocks to cartwheels, statues to sinks, you're spoilt for choice. And what's this? I don't believe it. <gasps> Look at that. <laughs> Ring any bells? Yep, this one's in better nick than the one you picked up yesterday, too. No regrets, though, eh? Look, don't even ask how no, much it is, because we'll only be upset. Oh. But that's interesting, isn't it? He's got a coffin. 
<laughs> well, this is the most extraordinary place I've ever been to in my life, and I love reclamation places. But I think this one needs a little bit of a sort through. A bat and nosy outside. Oh, yeah, they can be quite fun. People use those as doorstops. Yeah, we've got some more of those in this show, right? They've spotted a cobbler's last, a foot-shaped tool that, when slotted inside a shoe, provides a stable block for when nailing on a sole. So we've got those there. And they're, they're working, they put the, the they shoe were, on yeah, there and... Yeah, that's right. Sometimes they have them stamped the size, aren't they? Right, here's this one. I think the arm's about an inch longer from when I picked it up. <laughs> well, that's definitely the most interesting one. I was just thinking there's a doorstop, something like that. Slightly industrial sort of look to it. Some of the original paints. So they're 12 quid each normally. Can we do two for 12? Hey, that's buy one, get one free. Will John bog off? Um, I think I would, yes. Well, I tell you what, let's shake on it and I'm going to say thank you very much. How kind. That final purchase means Geraldine and Will have spent every single penny of their £400. Congratulations. There you are. That's the Thanks last of our funds. And thank you. Thank you, John. Very nice Pleased to meet to you. It's an too. amazing yes. place. Right, grab that one. Thank you. And I'll grab... I'm always left with the heavy stuff, aren't I? Thank, thank you, you, John. You're getting so That's good at it. Shopping completed, it's time for our actors to take a peek at what the competition has bought. OK, let's do it. Shall we do it, Charles? Right, Show them. Get that in. It's two okay. cloths. Napoleon's hat. <coughs> That's the provenance worn by Napoleon. It's nice. <laughs> Just the hat and not the hat included. Well, it's all very pretty. I think it's a lunchbox. <laughs> it's not. It's a bicorn lunchbox. It would lunchbox. make a fine lunchbox. Well, it's pretty worked, wouldn't it? It would make it's a, a good lunchbox. Has then. it got anything in it? Does it open? Unfortunately, oh. it opens, but unfortunately, there is nothing in it. I reckon you paid twenty quid. Okay, times up yeah. by three. <laughs> <laughs> really? Sure. Why not? That's good. And uh... <laughs> Charles, take the lead on this one because you loved it. Well, this is this is trench art, right? Yes. Okay. You know, made from old shell. Empty shell cases yeah. from the trenches. What did you? Oh, trench art. Yeah. And the the book press is, cuttings is, a, is an al It's well, it says an album of, of press cuttings from the First World War. Yeah. There are no cuttings in it, but there are these photographs. Oh, photographs from the trenches. In the First World War, from the trenches. Wow. And there's a this sort is... of interwar piece. And that's a bit and... of trench art. Yeah, it's lovely. It kind of goes with it, so that's it a does go with it. Time for Act Two. Cuttings up. I wasn't God. expecting marquetry. Quite jazzy, isn't it? <gasps> Would you believe me if I told you we bought that off a couple of blokes in the street? Literally. No, no I wouldn't you Literally. Me. No, well, it's true. You're so lucky. We were, just happened to be in the right place at the right time. Then the little bit of export Chinese silver, snuff box. And knowing your luck, 50 pence or so? <laughs> Not quite. It was um, 60 quid. Yeah, well, now we're in the hands of the auctioneer, so, yeah. guys... We are. Good luck. Good we'll luck. see you there. Good luck, Natasha. Mm, Natasha. 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 Good luck. Thank you. May the best well team done. win. Maybe. Do I mean that? I don't know if I do. Well done. What do our thespians really think? Time for some backstage gossip. I think we've got them rattled, you know. Did you see their faces when yes. we revealed the cabinet? Yes. They thought it was a setup. Two guys in the street, excuse me, they bump into Steptoe and Son <laughs> and they get a piece of Empire furniture. Thank you and good night. <laughs> After beginning back in Tetbury in Gloucestershire, they're now on their way to an auction in Essex and the town of Rayleigh. So are you excited, Gerald? I am excited. Right. I, um, I'm intrigued, a little trepidatious. I'm convinced that that rather extraordinary piece of empire furniture that you got literally off the back of a lorry... Literally. Um, ..is going to do very well. Let's hope so. Well, here we are. And here they are. And here they are, indeed. Let battle commence. Charles and Natasha spent £394 picking up six lots. While Geraldine and Will spent all of their £400 budget, don't you love it, also on six lots. I wonder what auctioneer Mark Stacey thinks of what our actors have acquired. Silver vases, Edwardian, very nice. The Chinese box, the star of the show. It's a fantastic box, plenty of interest. Time for our teams to take centre stage. £10, I've got 12, 14, 16, Isn't that cool? £16 down. Uh, They're six in the hope. Indeed. We're starting with Geraldine and Will. Is there a calling for Moroccan hardwood lintels in Essex? 
Commission bids at 20. 22, 25 against you, sir. 28, 30, I've got. You're bidding. One more. 32, Claiming. 35. Claiming. One more takes it. 38, I'm out. At 38 pound at the far back. Any advances at 38 pounds? All done. You're all finished. Hammers up at 38 pounds and selling. Not quite the flying start they were hoping for. Five, Listen, six, things can five, only go up. I thought it was going to go up far less than that. Did you? Yeah. How about your next lot, Geraldine? It's your chance by the street fan secretaire. At 120, here with me, 130 online, 140 is bid. At 140, 160, 160. Creeping, 160 now, creeping. Like 170, back with me. On. At 170 now, at 170 pounds. At 170, you're so close, you're one so more close. takes it. Come on. 180, I'm out. Internet bidding's at 180 Surely someone pounds. in the room now. 190 anyway, coming in, sir. 190, fresh bidder. Eat 190, 200 against you. At 200, 210, 220, back online. 230 is bid. At 230 pounds in the room at 230. 240 is bid. Yeah. 250. <laughs> Bid now. 260. 270 is bid at 270. 280. It's creeping. 290. It's creeping. Internet's back in at 300 pounds now. One more, sir. Don't lose it. 310 now. 310 is bid at 310. All done. All finished at 310 pounds. Hammer's going down. First profit of the day. Yay. Well done. Yay. Well done. Thank well, you. Done. Still cheap, well done. Well done. Well done. Yeah, I think so. We made a little bit. Next, Charles's agricultural bench, priced originally at over 300. At 20 pound now, thank you, sir. 22, 25, 28, 30 against you. Internet coming in, 30 pounds at the back. 32 online, 35, thank you, bid at 35 pound. 38, internet bidding at 38 pounds. 40 anywhere at 38 pound. Coming in on the phone. Oh, on the phone. Uh, yeah, pound yeah. Is bid at 40 pounds now <laughs> against you online. 42 is bid. 45 is bid. 45. Coming back in online, thinking about it, 48 is bid, 50 pound is bid, 50, internet 55, thank you, 55 is bid. Savvy buyer on the net. Yes. 60 pound is bid, thank you, 60 pounds. One more online, 65, thank you, 65 is bid. 70 pound bid, thank you. Coming back in online, all done then. It's oh, on no, the phone no. at 70 pounds. I'll sell at 70, fair warning, last chance then please at 70. Rotten luck, Charles. It could have been well, worse. Well, it could have been worse. It could have been, well, been worse. Brilliant. <laughs> Charles could certainly do with a profit on his First World War photo book and trench art vases together as a job lot. At twenty pounds advance, if you wish. Two, five, eight, thirty bid now. At thirty pounds, come along. Thirty-two, thirty-five. Thank you. At thirty-five pounds, thirty-eight, forty bid. At forty pounds now. One more, sir. At forty pounds now. All done. All finished. Oh, no. Last chance, sure. then, please. Looks painful. At forty pounds. All done. All finished. A profit of one pound. Still a profit, just. Well, oh, OK. It's a loss, it's a loss. Next, Geraldine's two lasts. What can these cobble together? Ooh. Ten pound is bid at ten pound now. Ten pound, where's the twelve? Go on, at twelve pound now, twelve is bid. And fourteen now, yeah, fourteen bid. Yeah. He's shaking his head. Oh. One more, I'll be fourteen, sixteen bid now. Sixteen pounds now, just behind at sixteen pounds. Second row bid. Are we all done at sixteen pounds? Sixteen pounds. Another positive return. Well done. That's Charles, a roaring very good. <laughs> but a few more like that, Geraldine. Now, what can Charles's 1960s ticket machine do? Interest draining at twenty pound bid at twenty. Advance if you like at twenty. Internet twenty two, twenty five, twenty eight, thirty bid now. Come along. Thirty two, thirty five, thirty eight is bid. Commission bids at forty now. At forty pounds. One more, 42, 45, at 45 pound now, 48, 50 is bid, and five, 60 is back with me. At 60 pound, it's a commission bid. Are we all done? Are we all finished? It's on the commission at 60 pound. Last chance then, please, at 60. Cool, that's the ticket. A healthy profit there. Bingo. <laughs> Pretty good, eh? Well, well done. done. Good work. Not bad. Well Geraldine's job lot of West Country pottery is to go next. Commission bid I have at £10, 10 is on the commission, 12 anywhere. It's here with me at 10. Any advances? It's a maiden bid, 10, 12, thank you, madam. 14 against you, 16 bid, £18. One more takes it. Yes. No, £18, my commission bid then. All done, all finished. Last time then, please, at 18 on the commission. Another little profit. They all count. £18. Hey, very good, profit. very good. Job lot for Charles now, the limited edition volume of Evangeline and the Wooden Photo Frame. 
Water 18 at £40. It's here with me at £40 advance if you like. It's a maiden bid at £40 in the advance. Coming in, 42, 45 is against you. 48 is bid and 50 now. 55, 60 bid. At £60 on the commission, at £60, 65 anywhere. Are we all done? Are we all finished at £60? Last chance then, please, at 60. He's slowly catching Geraldine. It's fantastic. It's in Above great condition. Now, Next, Geraldine and Will's big green glass bowl. Let's get going. 30 to bid. Trade in, please. £30 bid at £30. Advance, if you like, at 30. 30, 32, 35, 38, 40. All on line, 42, 45 now. 45 is bid. Any advances at £45. All done then, you're all finished at £45. Hammer's going down. Big bit of glass, big-ish profit. Yeah. Well done, nice Gerald. <laughs> Very good, guy. Right, isn't it? Yeah. Brilliant. Now, if Charles wants to get ahead, he needs his hat box to sell well. £20 I've got, 22 against you. 25, 28, 30 bid, 32. 35, Someone's got a hat with no box. Now, at 35 pounds now, Seagull at 35 pounds, 38 anywhere. All done then, all finished at 35. Ouch! Hats off to you for trying, though. I'm sorry, okay. I showed it to you, Charles. Never mind. <laughs> now, only two lots to go. It's a battle of the silver. First, Charles's pair of vases and the silver ingot. £80 on the commission. It's a maiden bid. Any advances? Five, 90, five, 100 now bid. 110, 120 yes. against you, internet. Well done. At 120 now. All done then. All finished. Hammers up at 120. Hammers going down. Five pounds isn't to be sniffed at in this game. I think that's a good price. We did now. all right. All We've come out then. with all our heads held high from that one. Now our team's last lot and the auctioneer's favourite, Geraldine and Will's Chinese silver box. Straight in at £60. 65, 70 is bid. 75, 80 I've got against you, sir. 85, 90 is bid. At £90 on the commission, We're going at 90 the bang. To five. Online coming in at 95. 100 back on the commission is with me. At £100, 110 is bid. Creeping. 120 I've got. 130 now online. 140 is back with me. Commission bid at £140. <laughs> at 140 now. I don't feel completely at useless anymore. 150's now bid. £150. 160 I've got. £160 back with me. Behave. Last chance then, please. 160. For me. Hammers up and selling at one. 170. 170 back online at 170. Commission bids are out. It's online at 170. 170. 180 How anywhere. Is that? You're all done then. You're all finished. £170 final time at 170. Woo! The big finale has brought the house down. That's the way to very, do it. Very That's good. The way well, to that do might have got us out of trouble. Excellent. Yeah. I think you have. Got you out of trouble with a vengeance. I would Excellent. say that is the perfect way to end this auction. Shall we head out? Well, yeah. Time to do the maths. Natasha and Charles started out with £400, and after paying auction costs, they made a loss of £78 and 30p, leaving them with £321. And 70 pence. While Will and Geraldine, who also began with 400, made after sale room fees a profit of 89 pounds and 54p. So, with 489 pounds and 54 pence, they are today's victors, with all profits going to children in need. You've been a hoop. Oh, it's been such Thank a pleasure. Thank, Thank you. you very much. A standing ovation sees our marvellous players off. Bravo. Well, enjoy the sunshine. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Thanks a lot. See you soon. Toodaloo, you two.